Hello guys, it's Mashtag here. Today I want to show you how to set up Wi-Fi for your RG351P. Actually, there are many reasons for a Wi-Fi connection and internet access on this device. A Wi-Fi connection allows you to access the data on your device in a very comfortable way. No need to stress your micro SD card slot to unplug or plug your SD card, no cable lying around on your desk and the best you can not just access your ROM directory, but also the locations where your device stores your save games, screenshots and even the configuration files of RetroArch and Emulation Station in case you like to backup them. In this video I will show you what hardware is needed and guide you through the required steps to access these locations on your RG351 from your PC. Enjoy! As hardware setup, you will need a OTG adapter from USB Type-C to USB Type-A and a Wi-Fi dongle with a compatible chipset. I'll put you the links to these hardware parts into the video description. It's basically the same modules that I use for my RG350 and my RG350M. You could use any of the two USB-C ports on the top of your device to connect the adapter and dongle, but I recommend using the left side port so the right side port is still free in case you have to charge your device while using the Wi-Fi connection. Now if you have the hardware parts ready, we can start to set up the Wi-Fi connection on our RG351P. So if you set up Wi-Fi for the first time, you need to enter the main menu first. Press on start and scroll all the way down until you find the network settings entry. Here you see the option enable Wi-Fi, but before you check it, Ensure that the Wi-Fi adapter is connected to your RG351. Now that the adapter is connected, you can press A to enable Wi-Fi. This will take a few seconds before the Wi-Fi SSID and Wi-Fi key options appear. Now that the Wi-Fi is enabled, you can click on the Wi-Fi SSID entry and choose your access point from the list. Mine is called Internet Box, so I choose Internet Box by pressing A. And the next entry is going to be the Wi-Fi key. Here we're going to enter our Wi-Fi password. Let me quickly enter my password. So after you successfully entered your password, just confirm by pressing OK and wait for the network to connect. To force the refresh of the settings, just leave the network settings by pressing back. Now you get the Wi-Fi enabled dialog. Confirm it by pressing A and re-enter the network settings. As you can see, now the status has changed to connected and I got a valid IP address. Now let's do one last check and go back to the Emu LX settings. Here we want to make sure that SSH is enabled. Now this is an initial step that only needs to be done once. The next time you reboot your RG351, your device will automatically connect to your last network. Now that the device is connected to your Wi-Fi, we can access it from our PC. Therefore, I recommend you to use a tool called WinSCP. You will find a link to this free tool in the video description. If you open WinSCP, it will ask you to connect to either an existing connection or lets you configure a new connection to your device. Now let's set up a new connection together by clicking on New Site. Here, we want to choose the correct file protocol first. Therefore, click on the file protocol drop down menu and choose SCP from the list. After this, we need to enter the IP address of our device. Remember, you will find it back in the main menu in the network settings entry. My device got the IP address 192.168.100.1.1. Now enter the username root and the password emu-elec, all in small letters, and we're done. On a first connection, you may have to confirm that the SSH key gets added. This is a security feature of this connection. Click on login and la voila, we successfully connected to our RG351. Now take your right hand and clap it three times to your left shoulder and say the magic words I did well. 
Before we start browsing through the files of our RG351, we want to do an important step in the settings of WinSCP and allow it to show hidden files. Therefore, click on the option entry in the menu bar of WinSCP and choose preferences from the list. In the next window, click on panels on the left side and set the checkbox in the comment section to show hidden files. Confirm and leave the window by clicking OK and we're ready to explore the content of our device. The storage folder on your device is the most interesting entry point to further important folders. So first, let me show you the location of your ROMs in case you like to add further games. You will find the ROM folder for all your systems here in a folder called ROMs. As you can see, it contains subfolders for specific systems like Sega Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Sega Genesis and so on. So you can simply drag and drop in further ROMs to the associated system folders. Let me show you an example. Here I got my Game Boy ROMs and I will add Simpsons Krusty's Funhouse to my RG351P here. So I take the ROM and put it right into the GB folder. Now if you take a look at your device you will see that the ROM does not appear in your list of Game Boy games. Since we added while the device was running, we have to switch over to the main menu by pressing the start button, choose game settings and update the games list. Confirm by pressing the A button and now the game title should appear on your list. Let me quickly show you how to access your ROM directory without a Wi-Fi connection. Be sure your RG351P is turned off, turn it upside down and remove the SD card by pushing it inside gently with your fingertips until it releases. Pull it out and put it back into a SD card reader so you can access the data from your PC. As you plug in the SD card reader, you should see two further drives showing up in your explorer. One called EmuAlec and another one called Games. I recommend you to copy files over directly to your SD card if you want to transfer big files like PlayStation 1 or PSP games. For sure, you can also use it the other way around and copy the ROM directories back to your PC if you like to keep a backup of it. This is almost all you can do when you access the SD card directly. This is a very fast method to copy data and there is no additional hardware needed, except the USB adapter but I'm sure most of you guys already have one. Now the next thing I want to show you is how you can access your save games. You can save your game in almost any state by pressing both dual sticks at the same time. This will open up the quick menu of RetroArch for you where you can navigate all the way down until you find the save state entry. Click on it using the A button will save your game to the current save slot. You can change the save slot to different ones by pressing the D-pad left or right on the state slot entry in the quick menu. The option load state will allow you to load the state from the currently selected state slot. After you saved your game, you will find the associated save game file in the ROM directory of the system, named as the ROM that you played. If you like to take a screenshot of a current game scenario, you can also do this by entering the quick menu. Scroll all the way down until you find the camera symbol saying take screenshot and confirm by pressing the A button. Your screenshot will be saved on the device so you can copy it over to your PC. You find your screenshots in the folder storage screenshots. The screenshot will be named by the game you just played while you've taken the screenshot. This is how it looks like when you open it on your PC. Finally, I want to show you where you find the configuration files of Emulation Station and RetroArch in case you like to backup them. You find the Emulation Station config file in storage.config emulation station. Actually, 
All these .cfg files here are responsible for specific configurations of emulation station. So to back it up, just save all these files to your PC so you can copy them back in case anything related to emulation station got messed up. Now let's jump back and let me show you the location of your RetroArch config files. You'll find them in storage.config RetroArch. This is the main configuration file called RetroArch.cfg. I highly recommend you to save it to your PC. It contains all changes you made in RetroArch and its emulators, such as video settings, emulator specific shaders or controller button mappings, for example. You might also see the RetroArch-Core-Options.cfg file in case you did core specific configuration in RetroArch so you might want to save this file as well. And that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found this video helpful, let me know with a thumbs up. It doesn't hurt, but means a lot to me. And if you like to stay tuned with further videos on this channel, feel free to subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss them. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.